start talking about magnify the Lord, we, oh, magnify the Lord. That literally means make God bigger than yeah, anything yeah, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that becomes <laughs> our that becomes our job. That no matter what we're going through, honestly, that's the sign of a mature believer. It's not that you don't go through things. It's not that you don't go through hardships. It's not. It, it's none of those. It's not that you don't. It's like you just walk in the spiritual trance. That's not the mark of a spiritual believer. A, a, a true a mature believer. A, a mark of a true mature believer is dependency upon God. Like I've said that before. But then also you understand and you know that the trick to this thing is making sure you always understand that no matter where you are in life, God is bigger. Yes. Amen. Yes. There's no demon that's ever been placed in your life. There's been not, there's nothing that you've ever done. There's nothing that you've ever faced in your life that's ever disqualified you from the presence of God. And there's never been anything that you faced in your life that is so strong that it could keep you that if you are willing to worship God, willing to bow your will, willing to humble yourself to the almighty hand of God, there's nothing that you've ever experienced in your life that is more powerful than God. There's sometimes when you feel weakest is when I'm the most present yes, in your life. Yes. yes. The most present. So it's one thing to just recognize it, but we got to respect Mm -hmm. the plan of God. We've got to get to a place where we understand uh, and, and we, where we understand and, and we know the scripture and we identify where it says, you know what, your plans are, are not my plans. Your, your ways are higher than my yes. ways. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts, Lord. Amen. This plan that you've given me, it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. but I'll still trust you. I trust Thank you, you Jesus. Mm -hmm. God, you're telling me to go this way, but but I still trust you. You know, y'all y'all know one of my favorite passages in the scripture is John chapter four, right? And, um, and, and where he's talking about Jesus and the woman at the he meets the, the Samaritan woman at the well, hit <laughs> the well, right? But, but one of the one of, one of the things that I love the most is where Jesus says that it says right at the beginning it says that he needed to go through Samaria. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you understand Absolutely. anything geographically about mm -hmm. it, he didn't have like it wasn't even the quickest way to get to where he was going. He wasn't going to Samaria. Amen. He was actually getting ready to return to Judea. And so like he was getting ready to go somewhere else. But the scripture said that he needed to go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. I believe he needed to go through Samaria because he knew that the woman was going to be at the well. Mm -hmm. Amen. It had nothing Amen. to do with any other thing, but he knew he had a, a distinct moment, a, like a God-sized moment, a God-sized encounter was about to happen. Amen. Now, can you imagine Jesus? Because Jesus is the example of how we are to walk, meaning that he did the things that we are to do. Like he walked this earth as an example for us as believers, right? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine him? I believe that he probably prayed that day. I believe he prayed. I believe that he knew probably what the quickest route geographically was. But I yes. believe that probably somewhere in between him praying, he had a moment with God where he knew that it was the best thing for him to do or it was the will of God for him to go through Samaria. Yes. And so yes. he chose the will of God above what logically made sense. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. it would be smarter for me to go this way because, you know, it would not take as much. He knew I needed to go through Samaria. Yes. We don't understand yes. or know why, but he understood and knew why he needed to go through Samaria. Mm -hmm. How many times has it been in our lives where we knew that God was telling us one thing, but because logically it didn't make the most sense, we mm -hmm. just fought against God with it. Amen. Amen. God called you to start your ministry, but you're like, God, I'm not in the best place to do that right now. God's not going <laughs> to ask you that. <laughs> it's one thing to recognize the plan of God. It's a whole other thing to respect the plan of God. To honor the plan of God. What's to tell us in Proverbs 3? Trust, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own yeah. understanding. Yeah. In what? All, all of your ways, ways acknowledge him. him. And he what? He, he will direct path. your path. Yeah. Guess what? And I've said it and I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it until I leave this earth. God won't have to correct so much mess in our lives if we allow him to direct it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge me. But if the truth be told, we treat God on a case-by-case -case scenario like mm -hmm. a consultant. Mm. And we bring them in our lives on a need need to know basis, case by case. Mm. God, I need you in this one right here, but uh, I got this one. I, I'll handle this one on my own right here. I don't yeah. need you. But he's mm. saying in all your ways. There's never a time. That's why I say the, the mark of a, a mature believer is getting to the place where you realize there's never a place in my life where I don't need him. Amen. This world says independent. The spiritual world says total dependence. Yes. Mm. Mm. Totally dependent upon God. I, God. I am totally dependent upon you. There's yes. nothing... It don't matter how smart, it don't matter how many degrees I have, it doesn't matter how many colleges. God, there's never a time where I'm so smart that I don't need you. Yeah. Amen. Your voice. Yeah. 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 
I don't care what GPS says. God, I'm consulting you. Amen. Mm -hmm. The last thing that you got to do is once you respect the plan of God, it's one thing for you to say, okay, God, your will. Okay. But then your feet be still. Mm -hmm. You got to recognize the plan of God. You Mm -hmm. got to respect the plan of God. Then you got to be willing to respond to the plan of God. Mm -hmm. Walk in the way of God. Respond to the plan of God. Can I submit to you today that like we've been trying and we've been putting our hands to the plow and trying to do so many things in the name of making our name great. And sometimes it even has a great will to it because like God make my name great so I can make your name great. And then like you put a real like nice bow on it. (laughs) But it's still doing things our way. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It's still like it's still doing things our way. God, I want to. God, I want to do good things for you your way. You know what I mean? Like, I want to achieve great things, but I want to achieve great things your way. Your way, Lord. And sometimes in our lives, we can achieve great things, and God's sitting back like, I wasn't even a part of that. How often do we mark the success or the sign of God's approval in our lives by, like, what's going great and what's not? That's not the mark of God's presence in your life by what's going right and what's not going right. That's not. It is not. God, may we be the people that recognize your plan, the people that respect your plan. Respect meaning like I might not understand it, but I still respect your authority in my life, and I still respect your call. But not not only that, not only am I just going to give you the lip service and say that I respect it, but I'm going to respond to your call. I'm going to be willing to hear your instruction, do what you said do, and go. That's what Abraham said. No more evil.